Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and it's time for some MG action. It's been a long time since I've seen one of these. Let's take a look at it. So this is a 1972 MGB. No, I didn't say MGD as in Miller Genuine Draft. It's MGB. This customer is from Austin, Texas, and they had their car brought all the way up here because they want it fixed, and they want it fixed right the first time. The customers actually owned this car since they were in college. They've had it quite a long time, quite a while. The customer was driving it one day, and the engine just stalled, and a lot of things quit working all of a sudden. We're going to take a look around the car and show it to you. We're also going to dive into what we found. I actually had one of my guys look at it and they've already come to a conclusion. What happened? You like this car, Mrs. Wizard? I love this car. I love these kid cars when I was a teenager. It's a cute little car. It's adorable. And it's been a while since I've worked on one of these, but the ones I did work on were in way worse shape than this one. This one's in very good shape. It's got the 14 inch wire wheels and those are not replica, fake wire wheels, they are the real deal. You know they're the real deal when you can see the adjustments that you can use to adjust each spoke, and they're real. Convertible top's in good shape, it's not ripped or torn, and the, I guess you call it the back window, it's kind of like a window, it's actually very clear and easy to see through. There are some components that are apart in this car because we are diagnosing it but it is in really good shape. As you can see, it's from Texas. And yes, that is public information. We don't need to block their tag, and we're not going to block their tag. Let's take a look inside the trunk. Here's the original steering wheel, and we'll see here in a minute that it's got a, a nice wooden one. There's some literature that goes with the car. Moog. I'm not sure what MOAG is. Looks like some sort of a cover and a spare tire, a real spare wheel. A car cover. Here's the original AM radio, British Leyland. Oh yes, those are the days of British Leyland. Going on strike, putting things together not in a very good manner, not caring. But this one must have been one of the good ones. You can see our fuel filler neck is right in the trunk. It looks fairly new. There's a rubber duck between the fuel tank and the filler neck itself. Actually a little can of touch-up paint. The customer definitely plans on keeping this in best shape that they can. These are hood struts. They always work. They always hold it up. You just have to remember you don't just go slam the trunk or the hood or anything. You have to manually dis disconnect the latch then you can close it. We do have a battery maintainer on it. We're waiting for some parts. This side's also in good shape. Overall, the car is really nice, especially for its age. Let's take a peek under the hood. Some more of our struts that are solid steel. This is a 1.8 liter engine. It has roughly 80 horsepower and 95 pound-feet of torque. It's really not very powerful by today's standards, especially for a 1.8 liter. My Nissan Cube that we call QB has also a 1.8 liter. I believe it has 120 horsepower and about 140 pound-feet of torque. Twin SU carburetors. Let's check the oil on the carburetors. Yes, there is oil in the carburetors. It's for dampening fluid. That one's good. You hear the suctioning noise? It's used to dampen the throttle so it doesn't just fly open and close really fast. It's smooth. Everything looks good there. Here's our brakes, clutch, 
Everything's very clean under here. Look at the baby heater core case, Mrs. Wizard. It's so cute and so easily accessible. You can, Literally, it snaps apart. You take the snaps off and get to it, just like this. Isn't that nice? We've got some sort of K&N style filters on here. I don't know that that's stock. I imagine it would have had an actual air box here. And it would have had, through this hole, a little horn to pull in cold air. But overall, it looks like it's in good shape. It does have a little bit of seepage around the valve cover, but that's just basically rust protection. It doesn't, it's not pouring out or anything. You see a big oil cooler line that goes to a cooler up front, big steel braided lines. And one th interesting thing here is, this is our heater valve. You can adjust how hot you want the uh, heater to, to be on the temperature range. It's literally mounted to the cylinder head. Kind of interesting. Here's a Lucas Sport ignition coil. Prince of Darkness. You and you guys can go ahead and fill the comment section with Lucas phrases. I know you guys got 5,000 of them. I've heard them all. So I'm thinking this little access plug here is if the steering wheel was on the other side of the car, you could put your brakes and everything right here. So it can be either or. Either side of the pond, this car can be operational and legal. Here's a little baby windshield washer reservoir and a little pump that might last about two or three pumps. I guess it's better than nothing. But really there's not a whole lot to speak of. It runs and drives fine, what I understand but we will know that once we get the uh, starting issue solved. Let's go ahead and look at the interior. Well, ladies and gents, this is a really amazing car. And I have really, I really have loved these cars ever since I was a teenager. They are just so cute. And look at this dash. Look at all those cluster of gauges. Yeah, they're the ones we typically see in any car, but these are just more interesting than how they normally portray them. It does have 57,000 miles on it, and I almost wonder if that's actually what's on here, because this does not look like a car that's already gone around the loop with 100,000 miles and halfway through again. So this is looking really, really good. The dash, even though it is only about four inches big, is in really, really good shape. All of the hard plastics in amazing condition, and again, Got another note to British Leyland over there. I have a tiny little glove box. Uh, those are the only vents I see in the front. The passenger and the driver get one per side. Not dual climate control, but at least dual region control. Here is the new Alpine stereo, because obviously the person driving this probably doesn't want to listen to AM stations forever either. It is a stick shift and it does say MG on the top of the shift head. They do have vinyl seats and they are pretty comfortable. They're pretty squishy, but they're not very wide. This is definitely not a car for a big person, but it is a little car after all. We can see we do have some components brought down over there on the floor, and that's some of the parts that are being worked on. It does have a, I'm not sure if you would call that a magazine holder, map holder over in the corner there, but that's kind of a cute little addition. And it's again, covered in carpet and looks like it's in really good shape. The back seat is really torn apart at the moment, but you can see, hey, we, they put the battery in unusual locations, even back in the 70s, right there in the back seat as well, because we obviously did not see a battery in the engine bay just a second ago. As we look through the back window, you can see that that plastic really is really clear. So this is going to be a really nice car to drive. As you look at the ceiling, you can see the convertible top is in really, really good shape. It does have a little bit of fading. You can definitely see the skeleton of the convertible top and all the simple joints and whatnot. Notice no crazy wires like the last video we did. This is manual all the way. So no leaking hydraulic fluid on you when you're driving this car. As we end up at our steering wheel, isn't this a really cool wooden steering wheel? Does still have the MG marking on it. It says it is Motolita. And it is a really, really fun steering wheel. So this would be a great car to drive. I'm quite jealous of these owners. Let's get the wizard's take on uh, 
why that's looking like it is down there. That's not stock. I've had Magic Mike take a look at this and why when you turn on the key, certain things didn't have power. It was kind of odd, like what's going on with that? And he traced it to this ignition switch. It literally just is coming apart. There's little bulb bearings or, you just see one right here. It literally lost its balls. It just, they fell out. Also, this part of the switch where I believe the balls go to is just literally just disintegrating. It came apart. So that's very likely why it stalled on her, at least we thought at first. But the turn signals weren't working properly. A lot of the gauges weren't working properly. And when Magic Mike would jump different various pins on the ignition switch, they would all come alive. So we knew it doesn't need the whole ignition tumbler, it just needs the electrical portion of the switch. So we got that on order, and that will solve a lot of the gremlins. But even though we could bypass the switch and turn on the power to this car, it still wouldn't start. Let's go ahead and raise it up and we'll get to that. All right, well, let's work our way back. Let's start right here. There's the bottom of our metal radiator. Everything's looking good. There's the little baby fan. There's our steering rack. It is not power steering. It's just standard manual steering. They don't really need power steering on this. We'll try our sway bar links. And those are good. Easy accessible. Our brakes are good. They're about 60 or 70%. Everything's nice and tight there. It's got older style shock absorbers. You can see it says Armstrong. It's not a shock absorber like you would think, like a tube. It's actually what they call in the old days a knee action shock absorber. The control arm is part of the whole shock absorbing unit. You can change the oil in them and service them. You don't just throw them away when they're bad. Brakes look good here. The shocks are good the knee action shocks. There is a little bit of seepage right around through here, but we'll see if we can track it down. It's just the tiniest little bit. It's not much. It may not be worth tearing the whole thing apart, but we'll have, is it an oil pan or we'll have to see what's going on. Here's our transmission. It looks like maybe the threads could use some thread tape on them. It's just a little bit of seepage on the plug there. It looks like this cork gasket right here on this cover. Laycock overdrive, that's an overdrive unit. Looks like it could be uh, resealed. That's interesting, this little car has an overdrive unit. A Burfield company. Look at that little baby drive shaft. That's the smallest little shaft I've ever seen, Mrs. Wizard. Oh, it is adorable. It's tiny. Look at those tiny little U-joints. Yep. Here's our e-brake. More of the tiny shaft. The differential's not so small. It's like a Ford Ranger as far as the size of the differential. Here we have what looks like a sway bar link, but it's not. It's actually a link to the shock absorber, to more of these knee action shock absorbers. They had those in the 30s, guys, 1930s, 40s. It's old technology. Here's our battery. And there is our reason why this car won't start. The fuel pump has died. Magic Mike actually put straight power to that thing to turn it on, and it did nothing. It's dead. So we've got one of those on order. Convenient for you. It's not located in the gas tank. Yeah, it's easy to get to. Here's an area where I guess another battery could go, or storage or something. It's empty right now. Here's our other shock absorber. Everything's dry on it. The other one was a tiny bit leaky, but not bad. It's got rubber straps here. And the reason for the rubber straps is because the knee action shock absorbers are not going to hold the weight of the axle if you raise it in the air. And so the rubber straps will hold it for you. Here's our tiny exhaust. The customer said it has a rattle to it when the engine is running, so once we get the engine running, we'll diagnose that. 
There's a little bit of seepage here, but nothing too bad. Drum brakes in the rear, nothing's wet. It looks like it's had new wheel cylinders put in it. Here's our e-brake. Kind of neat under here, isn't it, Mrs. Wizard? It's definitely a time capsule. Everything's dry there. And here's our fuel tank. It's nice and full. As always. Yep. The tires look fine. They do have a date code of 2014, which makes them about seven years old. I would say you could still use these. You could still use these for a while. They got life left in them. They're not worth throwing away right now. But it's definitely something within the next year or two, it might be time for a set of tires. Well, it's not a barn burner, so it's not going to be doing 120. Right. It's not a race car. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing down. So I'll go ahead and stand all the way back here because this is a short little car. If I stand up front, I'm not even hardly in the shot. It's not a very big car at all. So what could have been disastrous as far as so many things wrong with the car, it ends up just needing an ignition switch, the electrical portion of the ignition switch, and a new fuel pump. And once we get it up and running, there's a few small other little things to look at, but it's really not going to be anything serious. It's becoming one of the hallmarks here at Omega that people are sending the cars from quite a distance because they know we're going to fix what's wrong and nothing more. We're not going to surprise them and say, oh, well, your engine needs rebuilt. It's going to be nine grand. There's nothing wrong with this engine. We're not going to pull a fast one on anybody. Okay, Wizard. This is a pretty eclectic little car. Not that many of them came to the States. Was it hard to get parts for this? Most of my European parts, as far as Mercedes, BMW, and MG, I'm able to find the parts through Whirlpack. That's who I use for my European parts. So if you go to a parts store and order parts, for a European car, they're going to go through Whirlpack. Well, I bypass the parts store and I go straight through Whirlpack myself. They actually had the ignition switch, but they did not have the fuel pump. I had to go to another site and I found a company that supplies the fuel pumps. It's a Lucas fuel pump, I believe. And we'll go ahead and install a new one and be back in business. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use on this cute little MG that Mrs. Wizard loves so much. I do, it's adorable. Check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because I just hired a new mechanic and we'll introduce him here soon. There's even more work coming in, which is really good. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.